Hi there, this is Adam Aram. I'm the product manager for Easy Invite. I'd like to show you some of the new features that we're releasing with this major release of Easy Invite. So I'm going to go ahead and get started and create an account. Once I've created an account, I'm going to go ahead and create a new list. I'm going to turn on the additional list management features. That way I can show you some of the new things that we've done with Easy Invite. One of the things you'll notice about the list page is that there is now a new counter up here and a new set of icons here. We'll get to those in a minute. The first thing we're going to do is start with the most common way people start on the site, and that is to load in some addresses. I'm going to select an Excel file, browse my computer, and upload. You'll see that this is significantly different than the existing site. First, we have a preview over here on the right-hand side, and second, we have your spreadsheet over here on the left-hand side. So this is similar to what we have today. The preview is completely new. You can now go back and forward in your list. Previously, you weren't able to do that. And as you go back and forward, you can make selections for each thing in your spreadsheet. So I'm going to go ahead and select first name. Actually, this is title, so I'm going to go ahead and select title. Then I'm going to select first name. And then I'll select last name. And what you'll see on the right-hand side is that it is actually spelling out the things that I have just selected. Now if I go to the next row, I'll see the first last names of the people that are on my list. The really cool thing is that I can make selections no matter where I am in my spreadsheet. So for example, I see that this is a street, I'm going to select street. And I can see that this is a postal code, so I'm going to select postal code. And here's a state, I'll select state. And here's a city, so I'll select city. Now I can go forward and back inside my spreadsheet and make sure that the things I've selected actually make sense. So name, street, city, state, postal code. Looks pretty good. I'm going to preview the rest of my spreadsheet and I just noticed that uh, I had a country in here. So I'm going to select country as well. I'm going to keep going through, make sure I've selected everything I want. I don't actually have to do this. If I'm confident in what I have in my spreadsheet, I can just make the selections when I begin and import immediately. The site will alert me when I get to the end of my spreadsheet. Now I can just go ahead and import. Previously, I had to make selections for every single thing in my spreadsheet. Now I can just ignore things, and I can do that by clicking import. And it will warn me that I haven't finished making selections, but I can choose to just ignore the columns that I don't have data in. Now it'll go ahead and upload my list, and you can see that the list came in really, really nicely, exactly as I expected. The great thing about the new importer is that it prevents problems where you might make a mistake in your associations of data, and then only see that estate mistake once you had uploaded the information into the list. The new importer removes that issue completely. Now I'll show you some of the new features over here on the right. The first thing I'll show you is this counter up here. We now have additional ways of counting the information here in the sheet. We have the number of envelopes remaining. So that is calculated based on whatever I've said for my envelope setup. We have the number of envelopes I've used. That's literally the number of people in here right now. And we have the number of guests. This only shows up if I choose to manage my guests. Since I chose to manage them, it's calculating everything in this column here for group size and giving me a total count. If I change one of these things, let's say I change it to 4, you'll see that the number of guests reflects the change immediately, as does the group size. So I can go through here, make changes, and Easy Invite will continue to keep track of how many people I've invited per party, as well as the total number of guests. This is a nice way to get a real quick read on what you've got going on inside your list. The other really huge change are these three icons here. You'll see that all over Easy Invite, we now have alerts. Anytime you uh, hover over something, that will show you what that thing does. So we have a thumbs up, a thumbs down, and a minus sign. The minus sign means delete, and you can see it says delete selected contacts. Thumbs down means to disapprove a contact, and thumbs up means to approve it. 
I can go through here now with the selector box, make multiple selections and approve them. And you'll see that my selections have been approved. I can select the entire list if I want to and approve it in bulk. And you'll see that all of the errors have gone away and my list is approved in bulk. I can go back through and unapprove a few of them and you'll see that a few of them have been unapproved. This can go on as much as you want to. I can also delete things in bulk. So I can choose maybe these first five people for whatever reason. Uh, I need to remove them from my list and I hit the delete button. Easy Invite will warn you to make sure you want to actually do this. Uh, but then once I say yes, it will delete them. The really cool thing is that Easy Invite saves all that information in your address book. So now when I go to load addresses, my Easy Invite address book shows up and I can get those guests back at any time. And there we go, they're back in. I'll approve them all and I can submit them. This makes it much easier to uh, edit your list really quickly. In fact, if for some reason you do make a mistake and you need to remove the entire list, it's a pretty simple procedure to remove everything in the list. Now everyone's gone. And let's say that I didn't actually want to do that. Well, I can always bring them right back. And now they're all back. Once I'm ready, just like usual, I'd be able to send this to Checkerboard for printing. This takes us to the next major feature change. I'm going to click Start Managing My RSVPs, and I'm going to add an RSVP question. I'm going to use multiple choice, as I would for maybe asking someone what they wanted for a meal. And we'll give some choices in here. It's a pretty uh, casual event. <laughs> I'll add the question in, and you'll see that the question is immediately reflected up here on the right. Now when I click on RSVP for a guest, previously I was forced to go through a lengthy process of RSVPing. You'll see now that's dramatically different. I can now choose my guests from my list, select a response for them immediately, select the number of people attending, and give answers all in one step. When I respond, the guest will show up right here with the responses I've chosen. This makes it dramatically easier to add in a lot of responses quickly. Some people still mail back their responses, and so we designed this so that for mailed responses, you can manage all of that mailing in a much faster fashion than you were able to before. I'll add in a few more. <clears throat> Throw in a couple more regrets here because my friends have conflicts that day. And there we go. We can see that uh, we have some attending, we have some regrets, we have some answers for our questions, and uh, everything has worked really well. As usual, people who have responded online will show up here automatically and the site will alert you as it would before. If we go back to our dashboard, we'll see something really nice, an additional counter that shows us the number of people attending and the number of invitations declined. This gives you a real quick way to see what's happening with the, with the invitations you've sent out. As before, there are tooltips everywhere on the site to help you out with anything you might need to reference. So for example, if you should need to see the original random list ID generated with your account, you can now hover over your custom one and see what it is. One of the other nice large changes to Easy Invite is the ability to update your name. Here I've used Michael Jones. We see that often people use a casual name or a name that um, maybe they didn't intend to use when they create their account. Now I can change it to whatever I want. I'll need to give my current password to make changes, but I'm, in, I'm allowed to make changes as I wish. You'll see now the site addresses me as Adam Aram, as will it address things like RSVPing uh, with my new name. Finally, one of the other nice features we've added in is the ability to edit things from more places than just inside the list. Now I can edit my event details by clicking on the pencil icon from inside the dashboard. I can turn things on and off here, change default party sizes, or change things about my account. I can even change uh, whether I have an order number or not, and that will be reflected to Checkerboard when the list is submitted. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy using Easy Invite.